This is Before It Was Headlines, It Was Prophecy, and I'm Katie Elizabeth. Several of us, I mean, I've referred to it several times of calling evil good and good evil. It's taken out of Isaiah 5, 20, and I even included that on um, the front page of one of the books I wrote back in 2008. And several of us are referring and making references to that passage in Isaiah that actually begins with woe to them who call good evil and evil good. And at this point now, it's, it's unfolding, it's taking place right before us on, on every hand. The redefinition is an outrage. This last week, I, I've, I've actually, you know, I mean, it, it's been visceral for me to, to hear, um, Eamon Bundy called a terrorist. While blatant terrorism is called workplace violence and violent destruction is now called a protest. Yet when it comes to protesting certain politicians, then there's a free speech fenced enclosure in which to stand. And we're accepting all of this. We are accepting it. And think about that for just a moment. That's not what someone else is doing to us. We're accepting it. The programming and redefinition is painfully obvious. You know, last year, the rioting in Ferguson that resulted in the destruction of businesses, storefronts, glass was broken, looting, fires. And it was called a protest. Now, the men gathered at the Wildlife Refuge have threatened no one. The reports continue to refer to them as armed. Well, you know, by the number of people who talk to me about their views on conceal carry, I'm guessing when I'm in a group of more than three people, someone is armed. Therefore, if we were making any sort of public statement, could technically be called an armed group. You know, that can just get thrown out there and say one person has a concealed carry permit. Anybody saying something political, we could be armed. It's getting out of control and we're letting it. This is America and so far the Second Amendment still stands. And I, although I am very supportive of this group in Oregon, I'm also thinking and have been for some time now that, you know, the BLM is sort of, um, this situation is sort of a reaping for what was sown with the Native Americans. The same government that took it away from the original inhabitants will use the BLM to, to ultimately take it away again, to give it away. I believe the most disheartening thing about all of this, though, is the fact it has really brought to my attention just how intolerant the so-called tolerant have become. When I read posts on social media or heard that, you know, there were certain celebrities calling for the death of these men, I just cringe. It's good, I guess, to know where folks stand, but it's also quite grievous to know I know people and used to have a certain respect for them who have made these horrific comments about the Bundys and the Hammonds. It has truly changed my personal perception of some individual. I, I, I don't like that that chasm exists, but it does. I've watched several conservative talking heads say this is not the right battle or strategy. Well, you know, we've already lost a number of freedoms in the USA Patriot Act, the mandated health care, Farmers and ranchers, I mean, we've seen little homesteads just annihilated but on the whim. I mean, they're, they're, they go in there like SWAT, like they are SWAT teams. Go in there and tear everything up because somebody in a, an official capacity doesn't know the difference between an okra leaf and a pot leaf. I mean, this is really happening. So... If we're all, if we have all these, you know, different things that are already going on, and yet no one's really taken a stand yet until now, 
when do we take the stand? If this still isn't the right time, when do we take the stand? When does someone say, when do we collectively say, enough already? And I'm not talking about being armed. I'm not talking about, I'm just saying, putting our, you know, digging our heels in and saying, I'm not going to get pushed any farther. When do we do that? And who determines where someone else should do that? You know, I put on something on social media when this all first began, and the the accusations and the horrible names are being called. And I said, you know, in reality, chances are if Paul Revere were here now, he would be called a terrorist. Everyone talks about the founding fathers and all of that. And it's like, you know, they stood up for the land. They were going to get pushed around with the taxes. I'm not calling for a revolution, but I'm tired of the redefinition. That's what's angering me. Just because someone says, I'm a rancher, I've been pushed far enough, I'm not going to be pushed any farther, doesn't make him a terrorist. Between the redefinition of programming, bravery is likely very soon to be categorized as a terrorist trait or some sort of mental health situation. And cowardice will soon be revered. You can already see that coming. You know, if we just look at last June or whenever it was, you know, look what Bruce Jenner and the media have done to the word courage. The redefinition is it's happening just at every hand. And what it really boils down to is calling good evil and evil good. And we need to remember. Our creator said woe to them who do. We're bringing this woe upon ourselves, and we need to stop. We need to just stop. Politicians do not have the answers. Creator has already given us the answer. In reality, America's already etched out its path. But there are individuals who are called to live above the fray. This has been Before It Was Headlines, It Was Prophecy. I'm Katie Elizabeth.